Hey guys, it's Ryan here from Explained, and welcome to another video. Today we'll be watching a movie titled Unbroken, which was released back in 2014. So let's get started. Turn on the subtitles and spoilers ahead. Unbroken is a war drama film based on the real life story of American war hero Louis Zamperini. The film tells the true story of his capture and perseverance as a prisoner of war. The movie opens with several US bombing aircrafts approaching towards the Japanese land during the Second World War. Louis Zamperini is a bombardier who's handling the mission from his aircraft along with several other crewmates. With the Japanese occupied land in sight, Louis commands the airstrike and his crewmates follow the order. They start dropping bombs on the Japanese land and they're successful in hitting their targets. But when they're about to return back, a Japanese fighter plane comes toward them. They engage in aerial combat against the Japanese fighter jet, but they also face another problem as their bomb bay doors fail to close. Louis tries to manually close it and almost gets caught in the Japanese firing. They manage to fight off the Japanese fighter jets, but in the process, some of the crewmates get shot and are heavily injured. Moreover, their aircraft has sustained several damages and they're lucky that the plane is still flying. The pilots inform Louis that their base is five hours away and they don't know if the brakes on the plane are still intact. This means their chances of survival are very slim. They finally reach their base and attempt to land. Due to the faults in the aircraft, it gets really hard for the plane to land safely. The tires on the landing gear come out and start screeching on the floor, but with the piloting skills of Phil, they manage to land safely. The story then moves back to Louis's childhood. As a child, Louis was a misfit, always causing trouble and getting chased by the police. At the age of just 12 years old, Louis drinks, smokes, and gets involved in stealing. As an Italian refugee, Louis gets picked on by American kids of his age. He gets into a fight with one kid and then gets ganged up by all of them. One police officer catches Louis and takes them to his house. The officer lets his mother know that Louis was fighting with the other kids and was also drinking alcohol. Louis has a typical Italian family, which now lives in the United States. Because of the trouble he causes, Louis's father is not happy with him and wants him to change. But Louis isn't one to listen. One day at a baseball game, Louis gets caught smoking and drinking alcohol. To not get caught, Louis runs away from there and his brother happens to see him running at an incredible pace for a kid of his age. So Pete begins to train Louis, saying he can make something out of his pace. He urges Louis to become a runner and motivates him to give it his all. But Louis isn't motivated and argues that he isn't like Pete and can't become a runner. To this, Pete reassures Louis by saying that he has all faith in him. He further encourages his brother by saying that if he runs, he will not be a failure, but if he doesn't, he'll end up in the streets begging. Seeing the trust and faith his brother has in him, Louis starts to take his training seriously. As the years go by, Louis improves a lot and starts to win many races. One day during a race, another player trips Louis and makes him trail further in the race. But after his brother's continuous support and motivation, Louis gives it his all and passes all other runners to get the first spot. He completed the one mile race in four minutes, which at that time set a new American record for high school students. So for achieving this great feat, Louis gets invited to participate in the Olympics for America. When he's all ready to depart for the Olympics in 1936, he asks his brother to come with him. Pete says that he knows Louis won't be winning, so he will not travel with him. Louis replies that he knows he won't be winning, but in the next Olympics, four years in Tokyo, he'll show the world what he's capable of. Pete sees him off by saying that one moment of pain is worth a lifetime of glory. This means that if you have the capability of enduring hardships and losses, you'll win in the end. After this, Louis leaves for the Olympics. In the Olympics, Louis participates in a 5,000 meter race. As everyone from his family and town sit beside the radio to hear him compete, the race begins and after a few laps, Louis gets left behind further back than the rest of the runners. As the race is coming to its closure, Louis sprints forward at full speed and runs past several runners. He doesn't manage to win the race or get any position to win a medal, but he set a new world record by completing the last lap in 56 seconds. This Olympics was held in 1936, and Louis had a dream to participate and earn a medal for his country in the next Olympics, which was going to be held in 1940 in Tokyo, Japan. Unfortunately, he was unable to fulfill his dream because World War II started, which caused the 1940 Olympics to be canceled. Now the story moves back to the first scene. After successfully managing to land the aircraft, Louis finds his pilot Phil praying to God. Louis isn't a believer in God and he doesn't quite get Phil's faith and him praying. Next, we see that Louis continues his training by running alongside a Jeep. 
Louis manages to beat his previous time, but just then he gets informed that he and his team are assigned to a rescue mission. However, the plane that they're using for that mission is made up of spare parts and therefore is unstable. The instability of the plane becomes apparent when one of the engines fails mid-flight. As they're trying to make the best out of the situation, another engine fails which causes everyone to panic. It's certain that their plane is going to crash land. Phil tells everyone to brace for the crash land and the plane lands into the ocean. The aircraft gets filled by water and it soon breaks in half. The crash has killed many of the crewmates and only three survive in Louis, Phil, and Mac. All three survivors get into the two inflatable boats. Mac is really disheartened by the accident and he believes their chances of survival are zero. Out in the ocean, no one will see them and rescue them, but Louis and Phil are optimistic and tell Mac to think positive. They have a couple of chocolates and some potable water. Louis decides that they will eat one piece of chocolate in the morning and one piece at night and drink only two sips of water a day. He says this is because there's no certainty for their rescue. They all fall asleep at night and in the morning, an airplane flies overhead and they try to signal it with a die and a flare gun. Louis fires several flare guns, but their attempts of getting noticed by the aircraft fail and they are left stuck in the ocean. They all get really disappointed and soon that they see that all the chocolate boxes are empty. Mac had eaten all the chocolates at night. This infuriates Louis because all the resources for their survival were depleted. The three struggle to survive in the seemingly endless ocean. They spend a few days without any food or water. And one day a seagull flies and lands on their boat. With no option for food, Louis grabs the seagull by its leg and they all eat it to fulfill their hunger. Unfortunately, their stomachs cannot hold on to it and they puke it all into the ocean. Next, they use the same seagull to catch fish and eat it raw. They get something to be happy about, but the following days, they have nothing to be cheerful about and are left discouraged. One night when all of them are asleep and they all feel their life slipping away from their hands. At that very moment, Louis prays to his God that if he saves him, he will consecrate his whole life for him. Fortunately, all of them survive the storm and their water gets refilled by the rain. A few days later, they manage to catch a shark and eat it raw. They notice a plane flying in the air. Louis fires the remaining flare guns into the air to catch its attention. Just when it seems the plane is going by without noticing them, the plane makes a turn and comes flying towards their direction. Unfortunately, it's a Japanese aircraft which starts to shoot at them. They all jump in the water to save their lives. They all swim deeper into the ocean and dodge the Japanese bullets. But when they all come out of the water, they find that their inflatable boats are damaged. They somehow manage to patch up the holes of one of the boats so that they can remain afloat. And now all three of them have to adjust in a single boat, which is quite difficult because the boat is considerably small. Now it's been more than 35 days since they're stranded in the ocean. Mac's condition has gone terrible and he slowly dies because of hunger. Now, only Phil and Louie are left, but they are both in really bad condition. They aren't able to talk or stand. As time goes on, their situation gets bleaker and bleaker. On day 47, they wake up to see a ship, but unfortunately for them, it's a Japanese ship. They become prisoners of war and are imprisoned on an island. After days without any food or water, they receive a bowl of rice, which they eat hungrily. One day, Louis is pulled out of his cell for questioning. The Japanese colonel recognizes Louis as an Olympic athlete. Louis gets interrogated by the Japanese about the Americans' newer plane models and bomb sites. After extracting information from them, the Japanese eventually ship them to another prison camp in Tokyo. Upon reaching the camp, we see that there are many more prisoners. Louis and Phil get separated into this huge crowd of war prisoners. The commanding officer of the camp is very cruel. His name is Corporal Mutsuhiro Watanabe. According to Watanabe, all the prisoners are enemies of Japan and all the prisoners will be treated as enemies. Watanabe catches Louis glancing at him and he asks Louis to look into his eyes. When Louis looks into his eyes, he beats him up with a stick resulting in a bleeding nose. He warns Louis to never look into his eyes ever again. Watanabe then orders the newly arrived prisoners of war to quarantine until the night. At night, other war prisoners tell Louis that since they can't use Watanabe's name, they have nicknamed him the bird. The next morning, all the prisoners are summoned into the ground in front of the commanding officer, Watanabe. He tells the prisoners that there is a talented man among them, an Olympics athlete, Louis. Watanabe then initiates a race between Louis and a Japanese. Due to exhaustion and starvation, Louis loses the race and falls to the ground. 
After this, Watanabe calls Louis weak and beats Louis mercilessly with a stick. The prisoners follow the war through newspapers that are stolen from the Japanese. One Marine draws a map to keep track of American positions. Louis notices one prisoner who has some of his fingernails removed as he was tortured for information. They all agree not to help the enemy despite what they're put through. The prisoners are subjected to hard manual labor, including cleaning out the latrines used by fellow prisoners and the Japanese army. One day, inspecting their barracks, Watanabe finds the map which one of the prisoners was drawing. He gets mercilessly beaten by Watanabe as Louis and others stand by helplessly. Later, Louis tells his friends that he's going to kill the bird. His friend warns that if he does so, he'll be shot dead. The only way they can win against Watanabe, the bird, is if they survive. One day, Louis watches the Americans attack the Japanese land, which gets noticed by Watanabe. At night, Watanabe wakes Louis and starts to beat him for no reason. Out of all the prisoners, Watanabe hates Louis the most. It almost seems as if he has a personal grudge against Louis. After a few days, a few people from Radio Tokyo come and Louis gets told that he is officially announced dead in America. After Watanabe mockingly allows Louis to announce to his family that he is alive, he is immediately taken to a radio station. There, Louis tells his family that he's alive, but he lies that he is living well as a prisoner of war in Tokyo. His family cryingly hears the news over the radio, and Pete, who's now a Marine, also gets the letter about his brother's condition. After this program, he gets approached by the men who brought him to the radio station. The men want him to speak again to the radio, but this time they want him to read a script. Louis refuses their offer because what it says about his country is false. The Japanese men try to persuade him by offering to get him out of the prison camp and letting him stay in Tokyo comfortably. However, Louis refuses this offer and goes back to the camp. Back at the camp, Watanabe smiles at the returning Louis, telling him that they are both strong and could have been friends if only they were not enemies. Watanabe then tells the other prisoners to teach Louis about respect by punching him one by one. The prisoners refuse the order to punch Louis, but upon seeing that one of the prisoners will get beat up instead, Louis urges the prisoners to hit him. Louis gets punched by all the prisoners, and this punching spree lasts the whole day. A few days later, when the American prisoners are made to display a play to amuse the Japanese army, Watanabe comes close and sits next to Louis. He informs Louis that there is good news. He has been promoted and will leave for another place. And then later, Watanabe leaves the camp. One night, the camp is bombarded by the Allies, which destroys the whole camp. The following day, the prisoners are immediately transported to another prison camp. The prisoners arrive at a new camp where the conditions of war prisoners are worse than ever. While standing in a row, Louis sees a familiar figure and collapses. It's Watanabe. As Watanabe goes on with the same speech which he delivered in the previous camp, he notices Louis and asks him to look in his eyes. When Louis doesn't do so, Watanabe hits him on the head with a stick. From the next day, all the prisoners are back to work. Here the work is to load the coal onto the boat, which is even more tiring. After a few days, while transferring coal from one place to another, Louis gets pushed from a high place and breaks his leg. The next day, out of exhaustion from doing his work, Louis stops to get some rest, but the officer sees him and immediately takes him in front of some wooden logs. As punishment, Watanabe orders him to pick up one and lift it above his head, which Louis does. Watanabe then cruelly tells the guard to shoot Louis if he drops the wooden log. The guard gets ready with his rifle as Louis almost loses his balance and drops the wooden log. Slowly, everyone's attention turns towards Louis, who's holding on to the wooden log despite losing all his strength under the scorching heat. Watanabe expects Louis to give up, but Louis doesn't. Every war prisoner is cheering for Louis in their low voices, and Watanabe also gives out an expression of uneasiness on his face while waiting for the wooden log to drop. Instead, Louis stares intently into Watanabe's eyes and lifts the log even higher while shouting in defiance towards Watanabe. The prisoners get encouraged as they see this incredible show of courage. Watanabe slowly becomes furious, telling Louis to stop looking at him, but Louis continues staring at him. Embraced by what he thought would be an easy execution, Watanabe attacks Louis. He beats Louis mercilessly. At that moment, Louis remembers the time when he used to run. Louis has defeated all of his fears. He remembers what his brother told him once, that one moment of pain is worth a lifetime of glory. After beating him up, Watanabe falls to his knees in exhaustion. Louis is left on the spot where he had been beaten up, laying there unconscious until the night. The next morning, an officer announces to the prisoners that the war is finally over. To celebrate the end of the war, the officer invites them to take a bath in the nearby river. 
The prisoners immediately think their end has arrived because they think their executions will be conducted in the river. However, after getting there, an American bomber plane passes them confirming that the war is truly over. The prisoners celebrate in the river. Supplies immediately arrive in the camp which the liberated prisoners promptly and happily take. But while the prisoners are celebrating their freedom, Louis goes into Watanabe's cabin. He sees that Watanabe is already gone, leaving behind his cane and a picture of himself and his father. Upon arriving home, Louis immediately kisses the ground. He finally meets his family after years. In 1946, Louis got married and later had a son and a daughter. And as he promised while surviving the storm in the ocean, he devoted his life to God. Phil also survived the war and got married. Watanabe, on the other hand, hid for several years as a war criminal until the U.S. granted him amnesty in an effort to reconcile with Japan. Years later, due to his newfound faith in God, Louis went to Japan and searched for all the people who were involved in capturing him. Louis decided to forgive everyone, even Watanabe, but Watanabe refused to see him. Louis always had a dream to run in the 1940s Olympics, which he couldn't pursue. However, he did fulfill his dream at the age of 80. He ran with the Olympic torch at Tokyo, fulfilling his Olympic dream. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more movie recaps.